Shri Shulakmuni. Shula Kumar had listened to the preachings of his mother and other monks for years, but the concepts of restraint, renunciation, and detachment did not appeal to him or move him at all. His mother had granted him initiation at a very early age of eight, but because of long-standing delusion of mind, his lustful desires did not vanish. In accordance with the promise given to his mother, he had listened to the inspiring sermons of Jinishvar Prabhu, but that too could not move him. After listening to his mother thus for a long twelve years, when Shula Kumar bid farewell to his mother, she insisted that he should also see the Guru before leaving. The Guru, instead of giving him permission to leave, preached to him for twelve more years. Thereafter, Anupadya and Gachadipati also gave him sermons for twelve more years, but all were in vain. After forty-eight years of initiation, when he finally left his mother, she gave him a Ratnakambal, or a shawl studded with diamonds, and a ring from her previous worldly life. Sri Shulakmuni found it difficult to go from house to house for alms. He stopped the practice. He thought that his joints ached severely as a result of sleeping on a grass bed on the ground. He told his guru that it would be better to have a cot. Similarly, he asked permission for having a bath with hot water. In the course of time, he could not bear the lok ceremony of removing hair, so he secured permission from the guru for shaving with the razor. A monk's way of life proved to be an ordeal for Shulukmuni. Penance and renunciation were too hard for him to follow. Finally, Shulakumar renounced all the formalities of his life of restraint and reached the court of Saketpur by evening. When he reached there, he found the court reverberating to the steps of dancers. It was an unusual sight for him, and he was spellbound. A diamond-studded shining throne lovely paintings on the wall, dazzling light of golden lamps. Amidst this unusual atmosphere, there were the sounds of loud appreciation by the lustful spectators. Shula got lost in this atmosphere of worldly joy and excitement. When it was dawn, the dancer's feet began to falter because of fatigue. Soon, her mother, Akka, warned her, conveying the message in a musical tune in these words. Much of the night is gone, and very little time remains. Do not be lethargic any more. No sooner did Shula Kumar hear these words than his conscience awakened. He found an inspiring message in those words. He gifted the Ratnakambal to the dancer. Shula Kumar began to ponder. So many of my years have passed, and now it is not desirable to be lethargic for the remaining life. What numerous sermons and preachings of the spiritual teacher could not achieve, a single utterance of Akka could. It succeeded in awakening his sense of penance and restraint. Shulak showed his mother's signet ring to King Pundarik and said, The name on this signet ring would tell you that I am the son of your younger brother, Kundarik. The king, on recognizing the ring, wanted to hand over his kingdom to Shulakumar but he refused it. Finally, the king and all others accepted initiation under Shula Kumar, and at last they all attained bliss.